Fritz, your commencement speaker for today is Art Subcheck. Welcome, graduates, to the real world and the way things actually work. It's going to be an eye-opener and downright shocking for some of you. Here's some advice that if you choose to follow it, it's going to help you become more successful more quickly in the real world if that's one of your goals. You've spent the past four years or more focusing on trying to impress college professors in order to earn grades. Now you're going to need to impress people who have real control over your destiny. These people are prospects, customers, clients, bosses, co-workers, boards, and committees. These might be old people whom you previously considered to be unhip. Perhaps even the nerds who graduated just a year ahead of you might be in this group as well. They all have something that you don't right now, and that's real world experience. Get used to it. Be humble. You will not be paid proportionate to your GPA, what school you went to, or if you have a graduate degree with lots of letters behind your name. The market does not care. You will be paid in direct correlation to the value you provide other people and organizations. Now, of course, there are some exceptions here. Grade school, high school teachers, nurses, other caregivers, military personnel, police, clergy, politicians, and other government workers. The thing is, money always flows to value in a market economy. Oh, I know, your economics professor might have missed that point amongst all the other charts and graphs and white noise babble. No job or work is beneath you, especially if you don't have a job right now. What is beneath you is thinking that you are owed something, or if you expect someone else to take care of you. In addition to trading time for money, you can learn something from every job regardless of how menial it might seem. And even if you do have a job right now, what you likely have is a lot more time than money. So invest that time in becoming an expert in one or several areas. You see, specialists are always paid more than generalists. And sorry about that liberal arts degree, by the way. Volunteer to tackle any task that most others avoid in any organization become a part of. Become known as that go-to person that gets things done. No one who is truly successful works nine to five. The days of sleeping till noon and staying out late are over if you plan to be anything other than average. Easy ways to success exist only in your spam emails. You're not going to get awards for attendance. There's no grading on the curve here. You're gonna be rewarded for results and for winning by being better than the competition, whether they be in the form of another company, or someone going for the same job as you, or the same contract or piece of business. If you thought staying up late, cramming for a test was hard work, and now that's all behind you because you got that degree, you're wrong. The tests and the presentations now have much higher stakes, and they're going to make the difference between getting the job, getting the sale, getting the promotion, or whatever it is that you want. Speaking of losing, if you're really trying, you're not going to get what you want many, many times. Sorry to break it to you, but you know what? That's okay. And it's going to be valuable when you learn from every experience. The real world you're entering is not fair, according to the definition of many of the kids you went to school with and might have discussed that topic in some woo-woo philosophy class. Whatever. In this real world, breaks are not given, they're created. Opportunities to succeed are not handed out equally. They're earned with a combination of attitude, risk, massive action, and providing lots of value to others. You, or more likely your parents, have paid or taken out loans for a huge sum of money to study lots of minutia that you're never going to use. I know you've probably said that many times while sitting in some stupid lecture from a professor who's never done anything other than profess. I know, I see some of you out there. The real learning that you're going to use now begins now. 
Don't be hesitant to invest money and time in advanced education in your chosen field. It's going to be more useful and pay off more than any other graduate degree. If you didn't excel at writing in school, do whatever it takes to get better. And the vocabulary you tap out on your, your, you are, mobile device might be okay with your friends and on Facebook, but it's not acceptable communication in the professional world. LOL. Speaking of Facebook, people who can hire you, use it. And they're not going to think that the photos of you doing those Jaeger shots and passing out are hilarious. Actually, they might. And then they're going to hire someone else. A perception of a person's IQ goes down a point every time they say, like, ah, uh, um, you guys, you know, dude. It's like not professional. And make someone sound immature, you know. How about this? Join Toastmasters or take another speaking course. It's not all about you anymore. Be selfless, curious, and grateful. You're going to be surprised at how it comes back to you. Emailed or texted thank yous are not acceptable for most things worth thanking for. Get a nice pin and your own stationery and lots of stamps. Yeah, some people still use regular mail, the very successful ones. Knowing all about the Kardashians or Justin Bieber and what celebrity just got picked up for being stupid will not help you in the professional networks that you'll need to be present in in order to get ahead. Consume your real world news in whatever form you choose and be familiar and conversant in local, national, and international politics and events. Your new social network is LinkedIn. Become as much of an expert at using it as you are with Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, Facebook, and anywhere else you waste time online. For whatever you want, ask yourself, who can give this to me? What do they want? And what do they care about? And how and what can I first do for them? Of course, I'm biased, but pursue a job in sales. It's the closest you're going to get to the financial rewards of owning your own company without taking the risk or making the investment and having to meet a payroll. Even if your formal job title is not sales, become great at sales because its skills and the results are required and used by the most successful people in every area of life. These skills include questioning, listening, recommending, negotiating, handling resistance, persuading, moving processes forward, having a great attitude, and more. Become indispensable, irreplaceable, and in demand through hard work, building your expertise, and delivering value. You likely know friends of your parents, or maybe your parents, who lost their jobs because they were expendable. Be obsessively interested in other people. Ask questions. Find out how you can help them. Follow up, stay in touch. Almost everything you're going to achieve will be the result of people you meet and form relationships with along the way. Always ask for what you want in all areas of your life. Don't wish, ask. Few things will be outright given to you without you initiating it first. This alone can make you millions of dollars and help you become happier than you ever imagined. Trust me on this one. Speaking of asking, you will remember the yes answers you hear and always forget about the no's. Hey, if you want to count anything, celebrate your attempts. The yeses are going to come. Your attitude accounts for about 80% of your success. And that's the one thing you totally control. Hey, rejection is not an experience. It's the way you define an experience. Stuff happening is inevitable, and it will, but the rejection is always optional. So learn from every experience, and you will never look at it as rejection. Most other people will not do what it takes to be wildly successful, and many, sadly, would prefer that you don't either. They will be jealous of your success and secretly hope that you fail. Sad but true. So distance yourself from them because they will pull you down. Okay, here's your graduate degree in communication. Pay complete, undivided attention 
to every individual you communicate with. If you're face to face, make eye contact. Listen as if your life depended on it. And don't interrupt. Pause after you ask a question. Then again after they answer. Then ask another related question. Don't shift the topic back to yourself. Oh, and when you're in the presence of others, please put the phone away. Turn it off, please. Paying attention to the phone instead of the person in front of you is the ultimate insult. And it makes you look like a self-absorbed fool. If you're easily offended by the words and beliefs of those different than you, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's time to grow a pair, quickly. There are no safe zones in the real world. You're not going to agree with everyone. And you will deal with idiots, haters, bigots, and racists. Don't let the words and beliefs of others affect you negatively. Take personal responsibility for everything you do. Never point a finger elsewhere. Victim is synonymous with loser and blamer. Own it. Put your name on it. Act like you control your destiny and you'll realize that you actually do. Most things you might want to worry about in the real world are never going to happen. If you can control it, act on it and the potential worry subsides. Treat everyone you come in contact with as the most important person in the world. You'll be surprised who can actually buy from you and give you what you want. You might also be surprised who can prevent you from that as well. Smile more often than you don't. You're going to feel better and the others around you are going to react more favorably. Being five minutes early is on time. Showing up right on time or later, that's late. Shows a lack of respect for the other person or people. Movement towards any end goal trumps planning paralysis. Done is better than perfect. Be serious about pursuing your success, but don't take yourself too seriously. Laugh easily and often, including at yourself. That shows self-confidence and endears you to others. Upon close examination, many things that might annoy you are truly petty. Sweating the small stuff makes you a small person. Be quick to let things go. Always apply this question. In the big picture, does this really matter that much? Just as with products, people can be viewed as commodities and therefore paid the lowest price for if that is how they allow themselves to be perceived. So differentiate yourself, set yourself apart, be unique and memorable. In the process, you're not going to please everyone. Hey, that's okay. In fact, if you're not pissing off some people, you're playing it too safe and vanilla. Here's some bonus advice. What you do is more important than what you say about yourself. Compliment often. Your body is like software, not hardware. Just like software, you can regularly update and keep it running optimally. You do that with proper diet and exercise. Unlike hardware, you can't trade it in for a newer model. So take care of the only one that you're ever going to have. You will rarely regret risks that you take and saying yes to opportunities unless they're potentially or physically harmful, immoral, ethical, or illegal. So when presented with something, ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen if I pursue this? Then compare that to the best possible outcome. Maybe you've heard size matters. It does. As it relates to your thinking and subsequent actions. So think and act big, huge. Whatever you think you can't do is likely a self-imposed limitation. Don't wait for things to happen. Make things happen. Movement opens doors, creates opportunities, and gets results. So take massive action every day. Welcome to the real world, newbies. Some of you will be wildly successful and others will fail miserably. Your choice. Now go out there and attack life.